Gout is one of the most common inflammatory arthritis conditions, and it is when there is too much uric acid accumulates in the joints that leads to inflammation. It can be very, very painful, um, and it's mainly a disease of too much uric acid. Gout typically affects men much more than women, about four times uh, as, um, as much, and it's much more common in older patients. It's also common in patients who tend to be a bit overweight and have other medical problems, including patients who may have chronic kidney disease, uh, a history of alcohol excess, and or also it could be related to the genetic makeup of the patient. But in, in summary, it's mostly patients who are men and older. So gout is a problem with uric acid um, crystals. Essentially, our body produces uric acid as a normal chemical. When your cells turn over, you produce uric acid. So if you measure the uric acid in anyone, you will find a normal level of uric acid. If, however, for many different reasons, there is too much uric acid, it's no longer dissolved in the blood or in the fluid in the joints. And that leads to little crystals forming. If you imagine, for example, if you put too much sugar in a small amount of water, eventually the sugar stops being dissolved and you end up with little crystals. Now, your immune system doesn't like these crystals being in the joints, and it recognizes that this is something abnormal. So when there's too many of these crystals in the joint, your inflammatory cells from your immune system causes inflammation to try to get rid of those crystals. And that inflammation can be very, very painful. And that's why it presents as an arthritis. So when gout happens, it tends to be a very, very painful episode. Um, it typically affects most commonly the, um, the first toe. Uh, and that's because in lower temperatures, and the toe tends to be in lower temperature, uh, the uric, uric acid crystals tend to form more easily. And so patients often complain of very sudden onset, pain, swelling, and redness of the affected joint. It can be so painful that at times patients say that even a bed sheet or putting on a sock can be unbearable. Um, and often the, the episode starts suddenly and lasts for five to seven days and then switches off suddenly as well. So the patients who have a history of gout will report having many of these episodes um, uh, recurrently, and it can be in different joints as well, but most commonly in the, in the, in the toe and in the ankle. So gout typically, as we mentioned, affects patients mostly at night. And as we said, it's mostly related to when you have these uric acid forms crystals in the joints. So anything that makes you more likely to form these crystals will result in a gout attack. At night, the foot tends to be a bit cooler. The body tends to be a bit cooler. We also, because we're sleeping for many hours, have less hydration in our systems. And as a result, that means the uric acid crystals can form. And when these crystals form, that's what triggers off the immune system. Now, of course, when patients have too much uric acid on board, it can happen at any time of day. But the very typical example of when it occurs would be at night for those reasons. So gout attacks can be triggered by many different things. Um, diet is a major contributor to, to gout attacks. And often foods that contain too much uric acid will put patients at risk of an attack. Foods like red meats, shellfish can have an impact. Drinking too much alcohol also results in higher uric acid in the body overall, and that makes you more likely to have an attack. It's also possible that some medications make you more likely to have uh, too much urate in your system. And those are medications particularly that affect um, how well your kidneys get rid of the urate from the body. Things like water tablets, for example, or blood pressure medications. Um, it's also important to note that having a, in, another infection or a history of trauma to the joint or even stress in the life itself can trigger off an attack of gout. It's also worth bearing in mind that sometimes patients have no obvious trigger. It's just that they have too much uric acid on board and it triggers off the inflammation. So gout is considered a chronic condition because um, it's all about keeping the uric acid level within the normal range. As I said, most people have, will, will have uric acid in their blood. It is a normal chemical in our bodies. So as long as we can keep that level below a certain point, then patients should not be getting attacks of gout in the joints or also sometimes in the skin. So anything that reduces the uric acid below that threshold will mean that the patient is effectively cured. Sometimes when the level is only slightly elevated, diet modification, weight loss, um, changes in alcohol consumption can result in a significant reduction in the uric acid and patients don't need medication. 
in other patients where, for example, it's associated with some conditions like kidney disease, then they would need to take medication such as drugs called allopurinol or cuboxostat, which lower the uh, uric acid level in the body if the, inter if the lifestyle measures are not enough. But with adequate control, certainly patients can lead a normal life uh, uh, after a diagnosis of gout. It's actually very simple to measure uric acid. It is a normal chemical that circulates in the, in the body. So a simple blood test can help us identify how much uric acid there is. We'd recommend that the uric acid is only measured every four to six weeks because that's how long it takes for any changes in lifestyle or medication to have an effect on the level of uric acid in the blood.